So, folks, old Donnie and one of his top cronies, Marjorie Taylor Greene, have been rocked by a scandal. Now, what we know about this scandal is that it's coming from right-wingers and includes Marge and Trump and Kevin McCarthy and a whole lot of talk about illicit, frankly, sexual things and all of that. And it's been part of this whole reason McCarthy got turfed and Marge defended him. And it's, it's seeping into what's happening right now. Because Marjorie Taylor Greene, acting like a drunken maniac at least, is running around the halls of Congress, running around the debate rooms and all of that of Congress, trying to stir up, you know, uh, support for her uh, effort to remove Mike Johnson, and it just isn't working. It's not working right now. Um, It may work enough that they'll make it so bad that it'll turf Johnson and make Hakeem Jeffries speaker. And there's a shocking detail about that in the last 40 seconds. But keep all of this in mind. Marjorie has ruined her own career and she's acting and running like a drunken maniac because of it. Listen to this, including Republicans and everybody else ripping into Marge along with her own unfiltered insanity. Sorry that these are my questions, but I didn't create this drama and it's very real. And I'm not the one that agreed to a one person motion to vacate. That's you guys, not me. Um, CNN was shown a copy of Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene's letters uh, to her Republican colleagues. Did you get a copy? I did. Um, So... What do you think of it? Uh, Look, I think it's a bunch of hogwash. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day here, uh, the American people elected a House Republican majority to govern, to serve as a check and balance on the Biden administration, not to fight amongst ourselves. Uh, uh, It's mind boggling to me uh, that after what happened in October, where eight Republicans teamed up with 208 Democrats to remove Kevin McCarthy and throw our majority into uh, disarray, uh, that we would be back in this situation where a member is bringing forward a motion to vacate. To say that Mike Johnson is not a conservative, I I would hate to know what she thinks of me then, uh, because, you know, obviously I'm I'm representing a district that Joe Biden won by 10 points. Right. That's home to Bill and Hillary Clinton and George Soros. Uh, Mike Johnson's in one of the most conservative districts in the country. Well, not only that, I think he is just, as a factual matter, at least in the modern era, the most conservative Republican uh, when you combine it with social issues uh, to ever be speaker, ever. That that may well be with the smallest uh, majority ever. Uh, And so, you know, for me, we have uh, issues that are on our side, whether you're talking about the border, whether you're talking about the affordability crisis, Uh, You see the Democrats disintegrating on Israel before our very eyes uh, and, and, you know, Senator Schumer and Nancy Pelosi throwing uh, Israel under the bus here. And meanwhile, you know, we have Marjorie Taylor Greene now trying to make this all about a motion to vacate. We have to work together. We have to get the agenda of the American people, uh, you know, passed. Uh, And that includes supporting our allies. What are you hearing from constituents? What do they think about what's going on in D.C.? Well, look, most people are focused on affordability. They're focused on public safety. We just had Officer Jonathan Diller murdered uh, in New York uh, with career criminals, 21 felony arrests, 14 felony arrests, including illegal possession of a firearm, released back onto the streets. That's what people are very frustrated about. They care about deeply. Uh, Obviously, the crisis at our border continues to be a major challenge. And Israel and Ukraine, people want to know that we support our democratic allies. I stand by Israel. I stand by Ukraine. We have a lot of work to do in the coming weeks, and we can't be distracted by nonsense like a motion to vacate. Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene just spoke to CNN hours after she sent out a scathing rebuke of House Speaker Mike Johnson. The House got back from a two-week break today, and Republicans returned to a letter from the Congresswoman from Georgia escalating her call for Johnson's ouster from the speakership. She also said she would, quote, not tolerate Johnson's expected request to drum up more aid for Ukraine. Green has been outraged that Johnson cut a deal with Democrats to avoid a government shutdown. Last month, she made the first step to force a floor vote to push him out. Now, CNN's Manu Raju just spoke to Congresswoman Green, and he joins us live from Capitol Hill. Manu, what did she share with you? Well, she made very clear that she is not backing off her effort. She is trying to lay the groundwork for a vote 
for his ouster. But she would not say what exactly would propel her to actually call for that vote. She warned Mike Johnson not to move ahead on aid to Ukraine, for instance, saying that that essentially that would be making the case for her if she if he were to go that route, but would not go as far as saying that that specifically is the red line. She said she wants to make the case to her colleagues who, in her view, Mike Johnson has been nothing more than like a Democratic Speaker of the House. The question, will Republicans join her? She didn't say whether or not how many Republicans she would have, but made clear she's ready to move ahead at the appropriate time. So you sent this letter out to your colleagues this morning. What kind of response have you got? Uh, mostly uh, support. It's been pretty incredible. Everyone's flying into town today, though, so I haven't spoken with everyone. But most of the members I've talked to agree with what I've said. Um, they may not come out and publicly say it. Many are relieved I've said it, and I've even heard within the ranks of leadership uh, there's agreement there. So um, There's agreement from members of the leadership. With, your, with my saying. letter, with uh -huh. much of what I said in the letter. Um, mm -hmm. This is difficult to do. This is not what I would like to be doing, but I believe it's necessary. Uh, it's, this isn't a personal attack against Mike Johnson himself or his staff in any way, but Mike Johnson has completely betrayed our conference, um, and his leadership cannot be allowed to continue going forward in what, this manner. What uh, is, you know, you've been saying that since you uh, introduced this resolution a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. What's holding you back from actually calling for a vote here? Well, you know, Manu, I really respect my conference. And in my letter, I laid out how I am a team player and the ways that I have supported our majority. I'm one of the few members that has paid all of my NRCC dues. I fought for this majority. I'm fighting for the next majority. I know how critical that is. And in doing so, I don't want to throw our conference into chaos. Mike Johnson has already done that. We are a conference in chaos right now because our Republican Speaker of the House is passing major bills without the majority of the majority's support. In doing so, respecting my conference and the other members in the conference, I need to communicate with them. And so I wrote that letter today laying out all the reasons with specific examples that no one can argue with so that they can understand my reasoning, have time to think it over, and we can come together and start talking about this. I also put it out publicly because I think it's important for the American people to read. I don't want them to just see us up here fighting constantly because one of the things that people want is they want us to figure out how to get along in Washington, work together, and do the right thing. And, you know, I come from a business background, and the way you get a job done for your customers, I view the American people as our customers, is we have to work together. So this letter to my colleagues is the beginning of that. First, we admit the problems. First, we admit the wrongs. And then we come up with a plan for change. I'm working on the changes that I would like to see, and I'll be proposing with my colleagues. Um, and I look forward to talking with them about that. Is it changes in terms of specific people who would be the next Speaker of the House? I haven't gotten to that step yet, but that may be something I move toward. Of course, that would be private conversations in our conference. Um, I, I personally would love it if a Speaker of the House is chosen uh, by a public vote, but it's not that way. Mm -hmm. The Speaker of the House is chosen by the majority in control in Congress, and that is a private vote that starts within the conference mm -hmm. itself. So those are conversations we have to have privately first. Um, but you know what? I'm very transparent with the people. I, I will be communicating my thoughts and, and plans going forward, of course, with my district. That's why I had a town hall last night mm -hmm. before I came to Washington this week. Um, but we have to make a change, and we have to actually follow through in action mm. what our words say, but and that's most important. Are you worried about, you, know, you saw what happened last fall, this being a chaotic 22 days and beyond and unable to get behind another speaker. Are you worried about chaos in the middle of an election year? Well, of course I'm worried about chaos in an election year. Mike Johnson has put us into chaos. Do you realize that all of my colleagues had to go back to their districts and campaign on the fact that our Republican elected speaker passed the Biden uh, agenda, that he funded the Department of Justice that has 91 federal indictments against President Trump, that he funded the FBA, FBI that raided mar lago uh, that he funded Biden's open border, which is the number one issue in America. Yes, we are in chaos, and that's coming from Mike Johnson, our Republican elected speaker. 
Am I concerned about a contentious, difficult three and a half weeks electing a speaker? Absolutely. I was miserable during that time. All of us were. I'm not going to throw our conference into chaos. I will not give our majority to the Democrats, but I will work this process respectfully with my colleagues, but I am not backing away of leading this, and I am not backing down from having those difficult conversations. That's what comes with leadership, and my colleagues need to be ready and be prepared for that. The GOP, which Marjorie Taylor Greene represents, and frankly, she represents a lot of voters. There's a reason that she feels emboldened to push forward with this, despite the fact that it would throw their caucus into chaos. And it's because she knows that there is almost half of the Republican Party uh, when it comes to voters that do not want to see Ukraine, any more Ukraine funding. But there are also a lot of Republican voters, and we're running a campaign in D.C. right now using the voices of Republican voters uh, that are urging Republicans to support Ukraine. And so the Republican Party is really split on this. And she holds a ton of power, not just because she's got a big microphone and people are listening to her, and frankly, because she might not stop uh, until she becomes the next Speaker of the House, but also because there's just no margin here for Mike Johnson. He's got two choices. He's got to play ball with the likes of Marjorie Taylor Greene, or he's got to work with Democrats. And neither of them are good choices whatsoever. Greg Meeks was just on, uh, leading Democrat, was just on with me, and he's told me if Hakeem Jeffries would reach out to him and say, I need your vote to support to keep Speaker Johnson in the seat, mm -hmm. he would do it. His reasoning is Ukraine aid is so important to get done now and not later. Mm -hmm. Should Democrats help save Johnson? Well, I think that, I, I think it's certainly true that there are Democrats that are leaning towards that because the majority of Democrats also understand how important Ukraine aid is, not just to the national security of the country, but to de the democracy of the world, if you will. And I think that moving forward, if that happens, there will be conditions on it, right? I mean, Speaker Johnson is in a conundrum. And Sarah's right. This is more about what the fissures are between in, within the Republican Party. It's always what Democrats have said, what a speaker within that uh, conference is going to face. They're MAGA extremists versus the common sense Republicans right now, the MAGA extremists have won battle after battle after battle. And that's why you're seeing Marjorie Taylor Greene now going after Speaker Johnson. But he understands that in order to get anything done, he does need Democrats help. And what I think this, this portrays for the election is that this gives Democrats the ability to message really what a dumpster fire the Republican leadership has been within the Republican Congress, and that because of those fissures, because of that tension between the MAGA extremists who really do have a lot of power, they're not able to govern. And more so, Marjorie Taylor Greene has no interest in governing, has no interest in solving the problems. She wants purity, plain and simple, and that's why she has filed those papers to try to get rid of of Speaker Johnson. And so Democrats are saying this is not what Americans voted for. This is a Republican dumpster fire. They do not deserve to be leading. They have no interest in doing so, don't know how to. Give Democrats the power and we will solve the problems that the country is facing.